Hello, and welcome to the Chapter 6 video. Let's get right to it. Chapter 6 assignment. We're going to be doing the very last problem. It deals with the exponential distribution. There's a couple videos in the content area that explain how to go through and do the exponential distribution, but I'm going to show you quick and easy ways of doing it. We're given that lambda is equal to 2. Lambda represents the rate. Um, remember that the expected value of an exponential is just 1 over lambda. And also remember, according to the book and according to reality, for an exponential distribution, both the mean and the standard deviation are exactly the same. And so let's get with it. Um, the probability density function is just lambda, which is 2, times e to the power of negative x lambda. Again, lambda is 2. And x has to be non-negative. So that's 0. Remember, the distribution of the exponential distribution is a non-negative distribution. It only has what's called support. Um, it's called that non-zero probability when x is not negative. So the first step, find the probability x is less than or equal to 1. Now we could find this using calculus, or we could find this using Excel. So this will be c. x is less than or equal to 1. I'm going to actually specify lambda there. That's going to equal 2. Let's just do that. So problem c. Uh, we need the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. That's going to be, and the function is e-x-p-o-n, and that's for exponential, dot d-i-s-t. And you look at the little help. Give, it takes x, lambda, and whether or not it's cumulative. So here's x. x is 1. Lambda is equal to 2 and true because we want a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, so it's cumulative. If it was just equal to, we would not use cumulative. We would say false instead of cumulative. Okay, let's go ahead and make those all the right number of decimal places. Four, I think. Let's double check. Uh, four decimal places. So eight six four seven. Now we want it between 0.25 and one. So recall how to calculate the the uh, probability of a between. Um, and the OSU supplementals will also show you how to do this. Uh, the probability of a between is the probability of being less than the upper minus the probability of being less than the lower. So in this case, probability of oops, 0 0.25 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1 equals, well, this is going to be also expon.dist. Remember, it's the probability of being less than or equal to the upper minus the probability of being less than or equal to the lower. And again, the first value is the x, which is 0.25 and 1. Second is lambda, which is 2. And then the last is true, 4712. And this is a greater than. Remember, all of these are less thans. We, Excel only works in terms of less thans. So we have to translate a, le a greater than or equal to into less than or equal to. Well, that's just equal to 1 minus probability x is less than 2. And let me go ahead and fix that typing. It's 1 minus that probability. So this is going to equal 1 minus, again, expon.dist 2, because that's our x value. Our lambda, again, is 2, and it's less than or equal to or less than true. 0183. So we got A, D, and E. I started out keeping track of those. So D, E. Now let's go to F. What does F ask? 
calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. Remember what I said up here. If lambda is 2, the mean is going to be 1 over 2. If the mean is 1 over 2, then the standard deviation is 1 over 2. Because for an exponential, the mean and the standard deviation are always the same. And the variance is always the square of the standard deviation. So what's 0.5 squared equals 0 0.5 to the power of 2 is 0.25. And that's f. Again, if lambda is 2, then the mean is 1 over 2. In general, the mean for an exponential is 1 over lambda. Find the probability that x will be in the interval of mu plus or minus 2 sigma sub x. So we need to, that'll be g, the upper bound is mu plus 2 times sigma. That's equal to mu plus 2 times sigma. And the lower, that's going to equal mu minus 2 times sigma. So let's go ahead and perform the calculation of the probability x is between those two numbers. Again, it's going to be the probability of x being less than the upper. minus the probability of x being less than the lower. <gasps> oh my goodness, I got an error. Why did I get an error? Not believable, was it? OK. Remember what I said. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. The probability of x being less than 0 is 0, which means the lower bound here shouldn't be negative 0.5. The lower bound actually should be 0. Point 0.9502. Now here's an interesting question. What does the exponential distribution actually look like? Well, let's see if we can get a drawing of it. Or let's see if we can get Excel to give us that drawing. So first, we're going to start with a bunch of x values. Those are going to start at 0, and they're going to increase by a little bit every time. And the smaller that little bit of increase is, the more uh, perfect our graphic will be. So I'm just going to get a formula here, it's going to be equal to that plus a hundredth. So I'm going to be increasing by a hundredth every single time. Yeah, I'm going to scroll down quite a bit and boom, there we go. And then y is going to be the height of that, it's going to be the probability density function at that point. So this is going to be expon dot dis, comma, and then lambda was 2 again, but it's not cumulative. I'm at that point point not less than or equal to. All right, I'm asking uh, the density at that point. So copy and paste down. How far did I go? There we go. So this is the height of the curve of the density curve at x equals 0.16. Again, note that these, these y's are not probabilities. These are densities. So let's go ahead and graph this. Highlight all the data. Give myself some more room here. Insert. What chart? It's going to be a scatter plot. And that's what a, an exponential distribution looks like. Starts up here at lambda and goes down rather quickly in some ways. And it just keeps going. I stopped at 2.63 because I ran out of energy rolling my mouse wheel. But it actually goes on forever. And probabilities, this is the PDF, remember. So I'm going to change that and write PDF. For the PDF, probability is just area underneath the curve. And that's where calculus comes in. If you know calculus, you get to calculate these areas exactly without using Excel. Or you can just use Excel and the expon.dist function, 
and do it without the calculus. I prefer the latter way. I love calculus and everything, but hey, it's a lot easier using Excel. So that's what we did today. We calculated the probability for a less than or equal to. We calculated the probability for a between. And we calculated the probability for a greater than or equal to. And in each case, we use the exponent.dist function, because this is an exponential distribution we're looking at. And then finally, we reminded ourselves that the support set for the exponential distribution is all non-negative values. So we have to actually change that lower bound to a 0, the lowest that x could possibly be. And that's it. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, remember my email. You're not doing question number 6. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Question number 5. Yep, you're not doing question five. Question five covers a very in important topic. And connect is correct here, here, and here. But once it gets to the probabilities, it's messed up. So just skip five completely. And I'll give you the points for it myself. And that's it. So I hope your weekend is great. Take care of yourselves. 